University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. You are in the third year of your uh, PhD studies and not yet on the market. But <laughs> yeah, not yet. Many, many friends here. Yeah. Maybe they write a reference for you. Yeah, okay. Okay. So try to give a good talk. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so thank you for so many advertisements for me. So my name is Zichao Zhou. I'm a third year PhD student from uh, UNC Chapel Hill. And today I will present a software approach to defeating side channels in last over caches. And this is a joint work with Dr. Michael Ritter and Dr. Yin Qian Zhang. So before I start to introduce the defense, we should have some background about the cache-based side channel attacks. So the cache-based side channel attacks are attacks that base on uh, the knowledge that the attackers can monitor the cache access um, caused by the victim due to the cache contentions. And the cache-based side channels are typically can be uh, classified into two types. The first type, um, it's called same core attack, which utilizes the private cache like the L1 or L2 cache. And second type is the cross core attacks, which utilize the short last level caches. And for recent years, uh, more and more researchers trying to explore the possibilities that uh, the applications for the uh, same, uh, same core were cross core side channels in the cloud environment. For side channels using the private cache, the, uh, it requires the attackers to be scheduled in the same core um, for, for some time. And that makes it not that applicable to the cloud environment. But the side channels in the short last level caches only require the collocations for different tenants. And many uh, famous works have um, proved the uh, possibilities for its applications in cloud environment. And they also prove that uh, the possibilities to extract out some private keys uh, in some crypto algorithms. To show you how, um, okay. So our work will focus on the last of a cache. To show you how a secret can be linked through the cache, uh, we, we will now first introduce a very uh, common vulnerabilities in any algorithm which has the secret dependent uh, decisions, and which leads to the left or right branches here. And since these left and right branches are different, thus um, there should be uh, at least some uh, different instruction or data blocks uh, used by two, two branches, and we use the green block and the red block to represent them. And they are different, thus uh, the left and right blocks will be mapped to the different locations in the main memory, and very likely to be mapped to a different cache set in the last of a cache. And if the attackers can have ability to use the cache contentions to figure out whether or not the uh, victim used the left cache set with the right cache set, the attackers can figure out a one bit for this secret. So to extract out that one bit secret, uh, there are typically two kind of um, protocols to be used in the last of a cache. The first one is a flash reload attack, which utilizes the short memory blocks. So uh, where the attackers and the victim usually will show some memory blocks. Um, and for the example I provided, they may show a right branch block. And using uh, that short memory block, um, the attackers uh, the attacker only need to first use a CL flash instructions to flash out that shared memory block. And if the, if the victim uh, do not choose the right branch, there should be no access to the right branch during that wait interval. And 
the, ne the following reloading period um, to the shelled memory block will find a miss. Otherwise, if the victim has access to the right branch, which is shelled with a uh, attacker, the reloading time uh, will find a hit because uh, it's already loaded by the victim. And this miss and hit pulse is a signal to tell the attacker whether or not the victim used that right branch. And that will link the web bit. Another protocol uh, used in the last little cache is a prime probe protocols, which utilize the collisions in the cache set from different physical memories. So the attackers only need to um, get enough uh, physical memories mapped to the same cache set uh, he interested. And for an example, I provided uh, the the, the right branches used by the victim uh, uh, will be mapped to that concerned cache set. And after the attacker got enough same cache set memories, the attacker can use the memories to prime the whole cache set and wait for a moment. If during that wait time, the victim do not access any memory block mapped to that, uh, the same cache set, the following probing time will find all hits for its uh, memory blocks. Otherwise, if the victim access to the right branch which is mapped to that, uh, the same cache set, the probing period will find at least one miss. And the hit miss is also a signal to the attackers that, uh, to tell whether or not the victim um, execute that right branch. And one bit will be linked. And after multiple uh, runs for the flash reload or prime probe attack, the, attack, uh, the attackers can figure, uh, figure out multiple bits for a secret, and thus even a private key can be linked out. So to provide a full protections uh, for both flash reload and prime probe attack, we propose a design called cache bars um, which including uh, two kind of me mechanisms, which we call that copy access and cacheability management. And our cache bars design is focused on the cloud environment and um, it's enhanced the isolations between different security domains and the domains can be a process, a, process, a VM or a containers. So to defend against the flash load tech, the very direct and idea is that just disable the active memory showings. So we propose to do something like this. So if the second domain, domain B, try to access um, the shared memory, we just make a copy for domain B and redirect the mapping to that copy instead of that shared memory. However, this kind of approach, um, it's, it's not enough because it still will introduce lots of memory footprints, just like disable the showing at war. So we hope to do some dynamic uh, control for the showing, showing between different tenants. And motivated examples is that if the domain A has access that showed memory a long time ago. When the domain B tried to access that showed memory, we think we do not need made a copy anymore because the long time already means that the bandwidth for the side channels is only one bit per that long time. And, and, we, uh, and, and that long time also means that the background noise will has a very high possibility to clear the signals. And we also uh, need to consider the deduplications for the copies because uh, in, in cloud there may be hundreds of tenants reside in the same machine. If we all made all copies to them, there will be too much redundant copies. And, and the motivated uh, example is that if the domain B has accessed that copy very long time ago, then we think domain B will not, not, not access the copy with very high um, possibilities. 
So we can safely just merge that copy into the original page and redirect mapping to the original one. And to, um, to implement that three point, we need to be carefully track the page states um, for every physical page, uh, for, a physical, for a short physical page. So we, um, and we classify the page states into four states. The first one is unmapped state, uh, which is just a free page. And the second one is exclusive page, uh, which is a page that mapped or accessed by one exclusive domain. And the third one is a short state, which is mapped by multiple domains, but none of them has access it during a, a safe interval. And the last state is access state, um, which will be transit from a short state if one of the domain have access it. And to be noted is that the exclusive short and access state um, it depends on a behavior called access. So, and, and that access behavior is controlled by, uh, by a timer, um, and thus we need a timer demons try to reset that access rate for each physical page, and we also need timers to uh, periodically deduplicate the copies. So, uh, one common uh, event to make the state transition is the creation for a copy. So um, it will first uh, translate unmapped page to exclusive page for the copy itself. And it will also translate the access state to the short state or exclusive state. Depends on how many uh, domains have shown that page. Another event um, is the timeout event which will be used to merge the copies and, we, and also reset the access bit for physical page. And to defend against the prime probe attack, we also designed a cacheability management uh, mechanism. Um, we, uh, and the di direct idea is that we try to disable the attacker's ability to prime the whole cassette by limited cache nice used per cassette. However, that kind of uh, limiting things is sounds like a physical level of things, but we try to use a software approach to implement it using a page fault in the kernel. So, uh, um, and, and since uh, the relationship between the page colors and the cache sets, uh, if we can design a queue per page color and per domain, we can, um, we can uh, control the number of cache nights used per cache set because um, the physical pages with the same color, page colors will be mapped to the same cache sets and they, and, and they will have no overlaps with other colors. And to guarantee the security, it's uh, uh, very clear that for each queue, the size should be less than the number of ways in the cache set, which is the number of cache nights used per cache set. And to uh, show you how we can use the page level things to control the cache nice, uh, we just give an example here that um, the last level cache is uh, eight ways, so there are eight cache lines available per cache set. And we set the queue size to be five. And uh, there's already four pages within the queue, so if we try to access the fifth page, since the queue is not full, we can just move in that page into the queue. But um, we found, but we found that uh, the cat, the cat set is already full, and we need to find a, a cache line to to be flashed. So it's possible that we may also flash out a domain-based cache line if it's a least recently used one. But it's um, but the next access to the page six will trigger um, a replacement to the uh, queue in the queue because the queue is already full. And as for the replacement strategy, 
uh, we use an uh, approximate LRU strategy um, using a timer daemon to sort it. So now we can replace the least recently used page out of queue and move it into the queue. And we also use seal flash instruction to flash out the cache lines belonging to the domain A. And in that case, um, we will not interfere domain B um, any more cache lines. And the size for the queue, it's exactly the number of cache lines you can use within that cache set. So according to our uh, design, the size of queue is a very important factor um, in our cacheability management because it will influence the performance and the security. And for, uh, for a smaller uh, size of queue, you may uh, gain a, a bad performance, but you can gain a high security. Uh, there's also a question um, about the, some, for, for some smart attackers, because um, the smart attackers may try to use the page for delays to guess out the size of Q, and then he can uh, collaborate with other attackers to fulfill the whole cache set. To overcome that kind of problems, we, we have um, a discussion about whether or not we should fix the size of Q or make it changeable. And we think if we can make it changeable, we will, um, we will make a uh, very high difficult, uh, we, we will make the attacker very difficult to guess out the size. So we, we, we made the model for the optimal distributions to randomly select the size of the queue. And to uh, prevent the collusions between different tenants, we also make an independent change for the size for the queue. Okay, so since we designed two mechanisms separately um, and we want to implement uh, our cache bars to provide full protections for both flash reload and prime probe. And um, we try to assemble them together um, and the main components in our cache bars um, include the page foot trap and the timer demons. So we pro to provide that full protections, we first um, deal with the copy and access which uh, include a logic diagram according to the state transition, and it also includes a timer demand to deduplicate the copies. And then we can try, uh, we, we will do the cacheability management, um, and it also including a timer demand to do the LRU sortings. So now, uh, and using that implementations, we can do some evaluations um, in the Docker container-based pass cloud. We do the evaluations for both the security and the performance. Um, if we want to do the um, security evaluation using the flash reload attack, we first need to consider where is the shared memory in the pass cloud, because it seems not that clear what is showed. Um, so the, for a Docker container-based pass cloud, if you use some file system like the AUFS or overlay FS, initially the containers from the same image will show the memory block. But if you did not use that file system or your containers are launched from different image, they will initially not show anything but there is a, a duplication mechanism like the KS KSF uh, that will merge the same content memory page into one, so they will finally show partially. So more or less, the tenants uh, in the past cloud will show, show some part of the memory. And to do the flash reload experiments, we, uh, we use that AUFS file system, and we also launch the attacker and the victim to, from the same container image to uh, allow the large sharding. And, and we let the victim to access that shared memory block during the flash reload interval, while let the attackers to repeatedly do the flash reload for, a short, for that shared memory and another unshared memory. And according to the time difference between um, 
the short memory and unshowed memories, the attacker can know whether or not the victim has accessed that short memory during that interval. Uh, that the, the top result is a result without any protections, and it's, it has a very clear signal. But with our cache bar enabled, we found that um, we, will, we will gain a very uh, similar reloading time, which can not help the attackers to uh, do the flash reload attack. And that experiment is usually for the general cases we can test it, but we still found there may be some corner cases like the, just the transition from the access state to the short state, which is very hard to be captured in the experiments. So we use the model checking to spin to model the page stations and the cache activities to show, um, to see whether uh, there is cache uh, interfere from uh, between different tenants. Another e security evaluation uh, is for the prime probe. So to do the prime probe uh, evaluations, we design a simple and cute side channels uh, to let the victim access multiple cache nights in, in, a, uh, in a short cache set during the prime probe interval. And, and the goal for attacker is just to guess out how many cache nights are used by the victim. We denote it as a demand. And to show um, some corner cases, we, we fix the size for the queue to, um, to give the advantage for attackers. And we also um, allow the attackers to know exact size for the queue. Thus, it's a very worst case for, a, for our defense. And after millions of flat, uh, prime probe attack, uh, the, attack the attackers can classify, um, classify uh, zero to six demands, 16 demands into six uh, classes. Um, for example, the lung represents no uh, cache lines uh, used by the victim. One means only one cache line used by the victim. Few represent the two, three, or four cache lines used by the victim. And we're training the uh, data and get, get a confusion metrics. And the metrics shows a very um, clear signals in the diagram. And <coughs> however, if we enable the cache bars, uh, the signals reduce a quite a lot. And we find that on average, we can reduce the accuracy from 68% to 33%, even in the worst case. And, we, uh, and to test scalability for our cache bars, we do the performance over, uh, evaluate the performance overhead in three aspects. Okay. The first one is the overhead per number of containers. We launched uh, one web servers per uh, containers, and we, try, um, and we first evaluate the throughput, and we found that the throughput is nearly not reduced, even when we increase the number of containers. And the overhead for the response time is very stable. Even when we increase the number of containers, it's, it's nearly uh, always be around 20%. The second evaluation is the overhead per web servers. We test eight different web server and lang uh, language runtime. And we found for most of them, we only accept a minor uh, overhead, and all of them are acceptable. And finally, we do the overhead evaluations per different operations. Uh, this is a complex uh, if, uh, if experiments, which include a MySQ and a memcache in an unprotected uh, machine and a PHP uh, runtime over NGX server uh, with uh, cache bar protections. And we use a near uh, practical mix to do the, uh, to, to uh, evaluate the response time, and we found that uh, only a minority suffers the uh, delay, uh, obviously, but they only occupy uh, below 10%. And maj the majority uh, only, uh, only uh, suffer below 15% overhead. 
So to conclude, we designed a co copy of access defend against the flash reload, and we also designed the catchability management to defend against the prime pro attack. Uh, and we uh, evaluate and confirm the security for a catch bar, and we found a very modest overhead on the pa past workload, and it shows a very promising applications in the past. And thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Any question? Uh, thank you very much for an thank interesting talk. You found your army of University of Adelaide. Uh, my question is, um, you said that with uh, Cache Bar, you still have a channel on the um, Prime Probe. Uh, it's smaller, but it's still yep. there. And I was wondering, where do you think this channel comes from? What, what the cause of this channel? Yeah, the cause for the channel is because um, we, we did not divide the cache into half for two tenants uh, to guarantee the performance. We allow uh, more than half the cache nights to be used per domains. So you will have some overlaps as we showed in that examples. Okay, so when you divide it by half to half, then you don't see a chance. Yeah, right. Thank you. Uh, Watson Lang from UC Berkeley. Uh, it seems that the efficiency of your, or the, the Ability of your defense to protect against prime and probe attacks depends on details of how how the last level of cache is met is mapped. In particular, um. if you have a cache where one page could contain several entries for the same cache line, then you would have enough to be able to contend that line and thus determine whether or not the other physical memory that maps to it was accessed by the other process. Um, right. The cacheability management uh, uh, should um, let the defenders to understand the mappings between the physical uh, memory to the last level cache. And as you are a defender, you should have ability to know that, right? Any other question? I think everybody wants to go for a coffee. Yeah. Uh, do you have any questions? Uh, no, of course not. <laughs> <laughs>